Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we're going to review the Inmotion S1 scooter. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. Sorry for being away for a couple days again. There's been just really a lot of stuff happening. I had to do um, some things not related to the channel. And of course, there's still the war going on in Ukraine, the Russian aggression. Please keep supporting Ukraine, both through donations, protests, those guys really need our help. With that said, let's get on with the video. So first up, big thanks to Inmotion themselves for sending me the scooter for testing purposes and also for me to keep. Um, just as a disclaimer here, this is not a sponsored video, however, they let me keep the scooter. Additionally, if you want to buy the scooter from the links listed below, there might be some coupon codes or affiliate links that I get a kickback from. Anyways, just like with my other videos, I will give you my honest opinion after riding the scooter for around about over 100 kilometers. Just like in my other reviews, we'll focus on six categories. Those are safety, durability, ride, performance, features and practicality, and finally a conclusion. Before we get into that though, a little overview about the scooter. And you might be asking yourself, why am I even reviewing a scooter when I know that my favorite mode of transportation is a electric wheel? Well, actually, from time to time, I do review scooters and e-bikes, and this is when they are interesting or different enough for me, or if the video would have a lot of value for you, the viewer. And I think with this in motion S1 scooter, this is the case. And for the price of around 800 or 900 euros, it pretty much packs all of the features that you would want from a scooter. Including pretty solid weatherproofing, suspension front and back, 10 inch tubeless tires, which are air filled, solid performance, for the price anyway, as well as a decent range. It's also very customizable through the app. The ergonomics are also correct and all of that in a package that doesn't look really intrusive or too bulky. I think it just looks right. All of that makes me sometimes actually use the scooter, even though I have many EUCs to choose from. And from all of the scooters I've tried before, in this price category, I think that is by far my favorite one. Alright, so let's move back to the review and let's start with safety. The battery management system on the Inmotion S1 is okay. It's a passive BMS, so nothing special here. I would really like to see a smart BMS like we can see on Xiaomi's and Ninebots, where you can check the individual cell voltages. With a smart BMS, it would be easier to see the condition of the pack and prevent further damage if the battery pack is not in a good state. Maybe that's something that Inmotion could add in a future revision of this model. In general, Inmotion does focus on safety and their electrical setup, also in their electric unicycles, is usually very good. However, in this scooter I did not take it apart, so maybe in some other videos you can double check that information. The scooter also uses the new charge ports, which are now required by the European Union, uh, which are a bit safer than the older GX16s or GX12 ports. Furthermore, those charge ports aren't hot, which is usually actually the case in cheaper or lesser known brands of scooters. There's also a temperature sensor in the controller, so I believe the scooter would shut off if it overheats. However, I couldn't see a sensor in the motor. I would really like to see that. And lastly, in the safety department, I would say that a highlight of the scooter is the water resistance and the ratings. So for the whole body of the scooter, there's a IP55 rating and I believe it's pretty solid. There is rubber seals around the cables. Everything looks very clean. There's a IPX6 rating for the controller. So the controller is also water resistant and not just like sitting there and being exposed to the elements and there's also a, a ipx7 rating for the battery so this is actually almost waterproof really good job here in motion caring about users that also commute to work or anywhere when it's raining in the future i would really like to see the scooter being compliant with the ul2272 norm so let's move on to durability and this scooter overall gives a solid impression and throughout the time I was using it I didn't have pretty much any problems with it at all. Now keep in mind that problems usually also pop up with 
heavier riders or over a extended period of time. So be on the lookout on forums to maybe see if there's some problems with the scooter. The stem mechanism appears to be adequate and the handlebars are solidly placed, they're durable and they aren't folding once. As for the time when I was riding the scooter there was also no stem wobble. The scooter is made out of aluminium like most of the scooters pretty much out of the market. Uh, the mud guards seem robust although they are a bit short. The deck is really easy to clean and this rubber texture also seems to be durable. Because the scooter also has suspension, in my eyes this will also improve its longevity as there is not so much strong rattling going on, especially on worse quality roads. The cable wiring is stellar, it has pretty good 10 inch tubeless tires, maybe the only real gripe that I have to make here is that it has a front drum brake. Those drum brakes, um, even after 100 kilometers, I could really feel that they lose their strong braking ability and it's uh, quite difficult to exchange them. So in the future I would really like to see either a even more powerful electronic brake because they could make it even more powerful, they make EUCs that don't have any mechanical brakes or a disc brake in the front. This drum brake solution uh, I'm not sold on it entirely. When folded, the scooter also feels durable, it locks in place and with the weight of around 24 kilograms, it's just on the edge of being a light commuter scooter. With that said, let's move on to the ride. And in general, this scooter places somewhere in between the monster scooters that we know of and the 9-bot Maxxis of this world. I wouldn't say though that it's the most stable scooter. The front wheel is moved forwards a bit when it comes to the placement on the forks and therefore it's a little less stable at speed. At lower speeds it's still maneuverable and the very small turning radius is a big benefit. You can pretty much turn around with the scooter on a spot. However, if you reach higher speeds it doesn't have the geometry like the Max or the Xiaomi scooters that you can just let off the handlebar and it will almost keep riding by itself. Now it is not a deal breaker and I can still ride with the scooter holding it with one hand occasionally but especially for novice riders taking the scooter up to speed over 30 over 35 kilometers an hour might be a challenge at first. When it comes to the throttle response, it is rather slow, especially at speed. If you let off of the throttle, it really takes a while to keep accelerating again. At lower speeds, it's better, but it still doesn't feel like a sporty ride. I would really like to see some options in the app of the scooter to make the scooter just more sporty and more reactive. The suspension on the scooter does work well. It has front and back suspension and you will feel a big difference if you're coming from a non-suspension 10-inch scooter. However, don't expect it to make any miracles. This thing, especially for a longer ride like 25-30 kilometers, it will be a lot less comfortable than a EUC or a e-bike. While riding, the handlebar is rather close to the body, but it's not on an uncomfortable spot. The big deck also helps to find a good position on the scooter. However, there is a small knob at the end of the deck which digs into your shoe sole. So I hope that maybe in some revision they would change that. It's a bit of an uncomfortable knob placement if you ask me. Furthermore, the tail mudguard is not a footrest. I would really like to see a usable footrest on the scooter. Footrests always make the ride of scooters better. Finally, if you want to go off the road for a bit and ride through some grass or light off-roading, some dirt paths, it is doable on the scooter and the suspension does help a lot. Don't expect the scooter to be amazing in those conditions though. The scooter has a small ground clearance which helps when riding on regular paths and on asphalt, but when going off-road it can be a bit bothering. Also, if you try going down a curb or there is a steep incline, you try to uh, just move the sc scooter up next to stairs, yeah, the scooter can get stuck sometimes. So be aware of that. Not a deal breaker again, but something to note. The braking performance of the scooter is acceptable. I wouldn't say that the drum brake is particularly strong. As said before, I would rather see a disc brake, but the electronical brake does work pretty well. Riding the scooter in the city in general is 
okay. Like, it's a lot more comfortable than sharing scooters. It's not as comfortable as those b big, beefy, you know, 0 10 xs V-sets, 10s, 11s, and so on. But for the distances that you make with the scooter, I think it's absolutely um, acceptable. With that said, let's move on to performance. First up, I will show you my acceleration test, and the scooter is faster. It's faster than the usual Xiaomi's and so on. Uh, it also has a higher voltage, which allows it to reach a higher top speed. Now, with a full charge, it's around 38, th uh, 40 kilometers an hour, and with a lower battery state, it will go down to 35 and then 30. Still, when going on bicycle paths, this speed is essentially all you need. When it comes to inclines and tackling hills, here I was a little disappointed about the scooter because I expected more torque coming from a company which wheels for around the same price go up 25 degree steep inclines. Here I was testing and the maximum incline I could tackle was 8 degrees. Now, in everyday situations, probably this is enough, but 12 degrees, which I was testing, was already too much. So if you're in a very hilly area, you're better off with a EUC, but in a mostly flat city, you won't have any major issues. Another thing to consider is if you're doing the usual inclines, and probably you won't see more than 5 degrees in your city ever, um, is that it doesn't slow down much when you're doing those inclines. So this is a positive aspect. The braking performance is, as mentioned before, not the best. The brakes feel pretty dull, uh, but the electronic brake does help out a lot. I do like the fact that the motor is in the back and the mechanical brake is in the front for three reasons. Firstly, when you apply the front brake, it's easier to turn the scooter around in tight spaces. Second of all, having the motor in the back allows it to have more grip on the tire. With motors mounted in the front, it's easier for them to slip out and also damage your thread of the tire quicker. The third reason being is that it's a bit easier to lift up the front tire if you want to clear a small gap or curb. I was also positively surprised about the range of the scooter. The 670 watt hour battery pack allowed me to easily go over 30 kilometers of range in the cold freezing winter of Poland. And my range says I did around 35 kilometers, which is, in my opinion, a very respectable result for this kind of battery. To charge it up then, you will need 7 hours with a single charger that comes in the box, or you can connect the second one, then the charging time is reduced to around 3.5 hours. I gotta say that a complaint I have about the scooter in the sort of performance um, category is that the battery indicator is not really accurate. While you have still four bars of battery, it actually means that you have 60% it, instead of maybe 70 or 75 that you would imagine. Additionally, the scooter died on me while it had around 20 or 25% of battery. So I still had just 17% battery on my app and the scooter died. What? It's alive again. Very weird battery management. The low battery behavior is really something that Emotion needs to work on. For example, at those 20% the scooter died on me, while it should actually not allow me to accelerate this strongly. Interestingly enough, after the scooter died and I pushed it for a while, I pushed it up to a higher speed and it turned back on again. I could still do around 2 or 3 kilometers while driving very very slow, so the BMS cut off the power before the control board. Now this is all technical lingo, but what I mean to say is that they really need to polish the software. They need to make the battery indicator more accurate and just more true to the actual battery state and they need to limit the power adequately to the amount of power that is available to take from the battery pack. With that said, let's move on to features and practicality. And here the Inmotion S1 does shine a lot. It has quite a lot of features, so let me quickly guide you through them. First up is the lighting, and the front light is pretty good. It's not the strongest one and I wish it was just a bit more powerful, but it has a great beam that doesn't blind any oncoming traffic. 
The brake light is situated on the mudguard and it's reasonably bright. It also does light up a bit when you are braking. Additionally, there is also the mood lighting on the bottom, which is very visible in the night. And it also features turn signals, which are red. This feature is really innovative as you don't even need to push any button to turn on those turn signals. They are working based on a accelerometer, which is in the scooter and how far you are turning with the handlebar. Now, I really like mood lighting and in the night, maybe those turn signals are uh, usable. However, they're also very, very sensitive. So even the smallest amount of lean can seem like you're turning somewhere. Um, I think it's still more of a gimmick than a practical feature, but it's still nice to see some innovation in the scooter world. A feature that is also connected to the accelerometer is the downhill assistance feature that you can turn on in the app. This is really cool because um, sometimes you just go down a hill and the scooter will accelerate, you'll have to constantly use the brake and it's maybe just a bit of a hassle. And here, if you turn this feature on, it will just keep the speed that you had when you started descending the hill. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's, it's a bit of a hit or miss, but I still think that it's a great idea and a useful feature. I left it on in the scooter. Let's move on to the handlebar. And there we can see a nice display that is really bright, maybe even a bit too bright in the night. Maybe they could add a feature that it gets dimmer when you turn on the night lights. It shows you the speed, it shows you the battery state uh, with five bars and they can also be blinking so it's a bit more precise than five bars. They it can show you error codes. So yeah, pretty nice readable display in pretty much all scenarios also when the sun is shining bright. Right. On the right side we have a bell, um, not my favorite placement, I think it should be on the left side because you have to let go of the accelerator to um, use the bell. The brake is on the left side, just a regular brake lever. I think that is really nice is that the cables are still routed very cleanly. I like the accelerator, the throttle a lot, it's a thumb throttle, it feels very solid and I don't think it will be going anywhere on the scooter. So now let's move on to the InMotion app and the features that you can toggle there. First up, there are four ride modes. You can also toggle them with the button uh, close to this display. There is a pedestrian mode where you're just pushing the scooter, eco, normal and sport. I was mostly using normal and sport. Normal goes up to 25 kilometers an hour and sport up to 38 40 kilometers an hour. One feature that is missing here in the app and in the scooter is the kick start or start from stand still. Sometimes I just really want the scooter to go from zero kilometers an hour, but this is not possible in this app or in the scooter. Maybe they will add it in the future. Uh, another thing that I notice is that the scooter will turn off the throttle if you go under two kilometers an hour. I think that the scooter should still be able to accelerate even if you're, you're going just 0.5 kilometers an hour, but maybe that's also a legal thing. The scooter also features cruise control. When this option is toggled on, then when you're riding and you keep the throttle at a certain speed, it will keep the speed for you um, and first notifies you with a beep that the cruise control is enabled. Sometimes this cruise control was acting a bit weird with um, keeping, with trying to accelerate or brake a bit too much, but in general it's a good feature. You can also lock the scooter in the app, which is a really useful feature when you leave the scooter outside. There's a lot of stats in the app that you can check. And of course, there are also firmware updates, which is great. Um, in motion could fix some issues or add new features in the future just via a regular firmware update. With that said, we are through with the five categories. Let's conclude it all. I think that for the price of 900 or even 800 euros, this scooter is really a well-rounded package. It's faster and has more range than the usual 9Bots and Xiaomi's of this world, while still not being excessive or aggressive like the other um, Zero scooters or V-sets. It still looks very tame. I think that no one will really be bothered if you go with it into a shopping mall or a restaurant. Well, it still allows you more than the usual small, small scooters that are on the market. I think that the ride is acceptable. All of the performance is also acceptable for daily use. Maybe with the only con being the front drum brake. I would really like to see a disc brake in the future on this model. 
the comfort level is good for the amount of range that you get out of the scooter so yeah i think it's just a good well-rounded product that, by emotion that i'm actually going to keep yeah usually i sell those uh, after a while or give them away to friends so yeah if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video see you soon yeah buy a electric unicycle instead